Welcome to another episode of The Mostly Mike Show. Today we're going to do something a little different. It's been a while since I put any videos out on the new Mostly Mike Show headquarters renovation. If you've been watching my other 100 videos, you know that I tend to mix it up a lot on topics. Well, a while back I made a 15 minute long video on an exterior house and bike shop renovation that we all know as the new Mostly Mike Show headquarters, aka Coco Villa. So in this video, we'll continue this journey by adding a small brick patio and sidewalk using some recycled bricks that I, like most of you, have a massive pile of lying around ready for a project such as this. We'll also be adding a concrete floor to the veranda and back, as well as a concrete sidewalk between the house and garage. Being that I know very little about concrete work, I opted to farm that job out to a concrete expert. This video includes some snippets of the various stages of this renovation as we progress to the much needed garage renovation, which will be the research and development center for the Mostly Mike show. I must stress to you that this is not a tutorial as much as just showing you how I did this stuff. If you do this at home, please be very careful. The Mostly Mike show is not responsible for any injuries sustained while assimilating the actions in this video. Please enjoy. Well, you can't win them all. <laughs> As for the concrete work, I hired a contractor who has done other projects for me over the years. This is Jerry. Jerry's been doing concrete all his life and really knows his shit. He and his crew were a real blast to watch and hang out with. I couldn't have asked for a better job finishing this concrete patio under the veranda as well as a sidewalk connecting the Mostly Mike Show headquarters with the Research and Development Center. I found a few videos in the past when this is just a dirt floor and this floor should definitely improve the quality of future videos. There was an old beat up shed that had seen its better days which I had to move several times throughout this project. That is until one day I found a note on the door with a phone number from someone who was interested in taking that shed off my hands. I called the number and said um yeah sure take it and down the road it went. If you've ever done a brick patio or a sidewalk before, I'm sure that you know what I mean when I say that it's a love-hate sort of thing. Mostly hate. Nothing about this job is pleasant. Aside from heavy lifting, the digging, the mud, the heavy lifting, the digging, and the heavy lifting, it seemed to rain every time that I got started. Please don't judge the Crocs. They're comfortable and easy to take off and put on. Should I be shoveling while wearing them? We all know the correct answer to that. Of course I should. And please, I said, don't judge me. These are brick tongs. With brick tongs, you can carry several bricks at one time from point A to point B or vice versa. They are best used in a pair to balance the load on your body. If you take on a job like this, I would highly recommend getting a pair of these. I'll include the Amazon links below for these helpful tools as well as any other tools and gizmos that I use on this project.
I pressure washed the old bricks, then staged them where they were ready to install. Before installation, the ground had to be leveled, then covered with a couple inches of limestone dust. Then tamped a million times with the tamper. The more level that you get it at this stage, the more gooder that the brick pavers will look in the end. In the past, I made a tamper handle replacement video. I'll be sure to include the link for that video for your viewing pleasure. Initially, I wasn't going to build the patio around the corner because I didn't know if there was enough pavers in my brick hoardings. But I managed to scavenge what I think was enough, at least mathematically, to do the job with a plan B if there wasn't. So more digging, more heavy lifting, more tamping. Repeat a thousand times. Sure, the job could have turned out better if every brick was exactly the same size and shape, but I was killing two birds with one stone by getting rid of a hoarded pile of bricks as well as making something beautiful out of them. But trust me, no birds were killed or injured in the making of this video. Installing the pavers was by far the most satisfying part of this job because they move along pretty quickly once you get moving. Because they were slightly different in size, it was like playing Tetris to keep the gaps as consistent as possible. Of course, to make everything stay in place, I installed plastic border rails along the outer edges with stakes and then dumped several bags of sand on top of the pavers to then be swept into the gaps. Now the fun part. The sand settles and then packs between the pavers, but after it rains you'll see gaps reappear and need to be refilled as required. Considering that this job was done mostly with recycled materials, I was very pleased with the end product. Stay tuned and consider subscribing to be the first to know when I move on to the garage or research and development center renovation series coming up soon. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.